This is the Ganesha Ultralight Titanium Folding Wood Gas Stove. You know you're interested. Keep watching. All right, just before we take a closer look at the Ganesha, I just want to thank Bryce at the Ganesha Project for sending this out to me. So I've had this in my possession longer than I should have before getting the review done. And I do apologize to you, Bryce, but as I explained in my emails that we exchanged back and forth, fire bands all summer long here in Nova Scotia just could not get the opportunity to go out and use this in the woods the way it was designed intended to be used but that's all over I can get out I've been playing with this I've had quite a few fires in it and I'm ready now to not only demonstrate it and talk about its design but give you my thoughts on using it so what we're going to do is I'm going to collapse it back down into its folded uh, storage uh, case and then take it out show you what it all comes with put it all together, give you some specifications for it, get a fire going in it. All right, so I have collapsed the stove down and put it back in its storage case. And then I'm gonna take all the pieces out and show you what it's all about as we go. But let's just start with its basic philosophy. And I think it's really reflected in the materials they've chosen, even for the case. The case is just a Tyvek envelope. I say just a Tyvek envelope, but it is very lightweight, very sturdy, and it's held closed with a piece of Velcro. I don't know how long that will last as a storage case, but it's working fine, and I've had this for a number of months now, so I think it'll last at least uh, long enough before I find it, make something else for it. Um, oh, let's just have a closer look at the logo. Hopefully it's showing up here in the light. Can you see that? Ganesha Wood Stove Project and the uh, figurine of an elephant. So for those of you who are not aware, Ganesha is a Hindu deity who is represented as an elephant with multiple arms. Um, yeah, so that's where the inspiration for the name from comes from. In fact, these are made in India. They're all handcrafted and the Ganesha project has a lot to do with cooking in countries where a lot of the cooking is done inside of homes using wood stoves with uh, very little fuel available to them and of course there is a great risk of carbon monoxide poisoning and smoke inhalation when it's done like that so a wood gas stove is a great answer if it can be made uh, cheaply or, in, or inexpensively for everybody to own one because a wood gas stove will not only reduce the amount of smoke hopefully to near zero but can use fuels other than wood. So it can even use dried dung from animals. And uh, well, I don't have any of that out here, but I do have some dry wood that I can use in it for demonstration purpose. So that's the bit of the history. In fact, before I go even further, I'm going to uh, suggest to you that regardless of whether or not you're interested in purchasing this stove, please go to the website and just look at the information that's available because I'm very impressed with the ethics of the company and what it is they're trying to accomplish through the design of these stoves. What I have in my hand is just made for use here in the Western world, but they make these stoves for use in countries, as I mentioned, where a lot of cooking is in, done indoors and very dangerous and fuel is not all that abundant. Okay, enough said about that. Let's start to look at what's inside the envelope. So when I got this, you know, I was okay yeah it's light it's uh, I don't know how long it'll last but you know until it, it doesn't last it's still very functional right so we'll put that out of the way here's the next thing impressed me the envelope that the folded stove uh, is in this is actually a ground sheet that I'm going to be using and put underneath the stove to prevent fires from occurring it's fiberglass impregnated with silicone very clever and very functional. It has, I wouldn't say a downside, but it does have something you have to be aware of. I'll explain as I go. So it just folds and wraps around and closes over the stove with a dome snap. And I'll just put that aside. You'll see it again in a moment. And then you get the two pieces that make up the stove. You get the inner chamber and the outer chamber. Let me just show you the inner chamber and how this goes together. So the inner chamber, as you can see, made of stamped titanium. You can see all the discoloration uh, with it. Now, mind you, the pot supports are made of uh, stainless steel, but everything else is titanium. The frame itself is stainless steel. And you basically just fold it open and the floor inside drops down into place like that. And so this is the feed port 
for the stove itself. And you can see there are holes for airflow in the bottom. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now the pot supports I'm going to talk more to in a minute because they're non-adjustable and they are sized for a specific pot or a sp pot of a specific diameter. But there are some workarounds if you have smaller pots and larger pots and that type of thing. So before I even assemble the outer chamber of this, you should know that this works as a wood stove all by itself. This is just a small ultralight wood stove. Then, you know, you could use this without having to use the rest of the stove. I've done that. Um, it works, but it's much more functional when you put the two of them together, and I'll demonstrate that now. So let me just go to the outside piece. So here we have the outside piece, and it folds out. So same basic construction made of stamped titanium with stainless steel wires through the frame to give it rigidity and uh, the hinges uh, support and everything else. So there it is there. Now inside, attached by a short ball chain, is this piece. And this piece, get it out here, here we go, is a, well, this is the, the bridge between the inner chamber and outer chamber that turns it into a wood gas stove. And you'll understand what I mean in a second. It is marked top on top of it. And that's important, of course, because this is top and you should be able to read top when you put it on top of the stove. Okay, so how do you assemble this thing? Because you can see it's not very rigid right now. Well, to do so, I have to start by partially collapsing the inner chamber. I have to take the feed ramp and tip it up like this. Holding it like that, I drop it down inside of the outer chamber. And when you get to the feed port, trying to do this on camera is a lot harder than actually doing it in live. So there, can you see? I have an inner chamber and an outer chamber. So this is the stove pretty much assembled. The last piece, of course, is this piece that I call top. And you can see that it is notched on all four sides and they will fit over top of the pot supports. A bit of fiddling here right off of the top because I'm trying to do it and have you see what I'm doing at the same time. A lot easier if I do this while it's sitting on the ground. Would be, but of course you wouldn't be able to see it then. Okay, there we go. It's all down in place. All right, so there is the wood stove completely assembled. Now, here's the thing. It is designed to be a wood gas stove. A wood gas stove works so that it creates pyrolysis through the uh, pre-combustion, I'm going to say, of the wood. The wood is actually heating up to a point where it's releasing volatile molecules of uh, burnable materials, smoke in other words. And so what happens then is the air that, and this is for people that may not be aware, air is being drawn in underneath the bottom of the stove up through between the two walls. And as it's drawn up, it preheats so that when it gets to the top of the inner chamber, the air is already quite hot and that convection continues to draw air up. Then, and hopefully this is going to show up, let's see. I may have to take it slightly apart in order to show you. No, I think that's showing up. All around the top of the inner chamber, that smaller portion of the wood stove, are a number of small holes. So when that preheated air comes up to the top, it enters back into the combustion chamber right there, hot, mixes with smoke as it's being generated from the wood, and combusts. So you, it's like a secondary combustion. Actually, that's what it's called, secondary combustion, as in, like an afterburner on a jet might be. So what happens then is you get very little smoke coming out of the stove because all of the smoke, theoretically, all of the smoke has been turned into flame. And all that flame is additional heat. So in theory, a wood gas stove is a clean burning stove with very little smoke to coming out of it and uses less fuel to create that heat at the same time. Okay, so that's the theory of a wood gas stove. Now, the thing is, how does it translate to a stove like this? Because I know those people out there that uh, know about wood gas stoves uh, are looking at that and say, it's not gonna work with that big open chamber on it. It's not going to work. Uh, partially true, and that is partially true, and that's been my experience. I'll talk more about it when we set it up and get it going, that it is not like other wood gas stoves, not just because it's a folding stove, but because it has that big feed port. Wood gas stoves generally are circular, like an inner chamber, outer chamber, bush buddy, solo stove, are probably some of the best examples, and you feed them from the top. That's good 
it seals the uh, ga wood gases in, but it has its limitations. You can only get the stove so hot. You can only get as hot as the stove will permit through the combustion and secondary combustion. This is different though. There is some uh, downgrading of gasification because this is open here. But the, having this port open feeds an extraordinary amount of air into the stove, which aids combustion. In other words, you can get a lot hotter with this stove than you can with a regular wood gas stove. A lot of the time, I find, as you'll see, you don't get complete secondary combustion. You don't get complete pyrolysis, the creation of that smoke, which will then go on to combust into flame. You get some of it going, and there are some tricks to get more of it going, such as using your wood to block that chamber off. But what you can do with this is you can, well, I've burned it with top-down burns, bottom-up burns, you know, any number of ways, configurations to see which one would work best. I'm gonna go for the simple bottom-up burn today, and just like you would a normal wood stove, because you can continue to feed wood in here without having to take the pot off of the stove. Okay, so that's the basic theory. But what does it look like in practice? Well, let's just set it up and get a fire going in it. All right, it occurs to me I almost got through the uh, testing without giving you the dimensions and the weights for this thing. So let's just do that and then we can move on. So the weight is what's most important here, 7.8 ounces. Yes, 7.8 ounces. Now that also includes that little Tyvek bag and the fiberglass silicone uh, mat that you use on the ground. So all together, 7.8 ounces, 220 grams. Now I'm gonna give you the assembled size and uh, the, the size of it all packed down will be in the video description. Five and a quarter inches square. So across the top in each dimension as five and a quarter inches or 13.3 centimeters. 6.8 inches high or 17.3 centimeters. So roughly the same size as the firebox stove or the Bushbox XL. Yeah, about the same size, but much, much lighter. Lighter than even the titanium versions of either of those two stoves. All right, now let's get the testing done. All right, as I get ready to get light the stove up, I just want to talk about how you might use a wood gas stove like this or any other wood gas stove. So for the most part, people will agree that using a wood gas stove, you use a process called TLUD, T-L-U-D, standing for top lip Updraft. In other words, you put all your fuel in first, you build your fire on top of your fuel, and as the burning sinks down, the level of the burning, that's where the gasification or the pyrolysis will take place, the creation of that smoke, and then the gasification, which is where the air enters in and creates that secondary combustion. Yes, you certainly can do that. That is the best way. Not necessarily the best way for this stove, so I've tried that. I tried that with vertically stacked sticks, I've tried that with horizontally stacked sticks. It will work, uh, it just takes longer to really get going. So what I'm doing now is I'm just gonna do a traditional burn like you might in any other wood stove. Start in the bottom, light it in the bottom, throw my wood in on top and then go from there. Pyrolysis still will take place if this is truly a wood gas stove, but it will take, it'll, well, it'll just happen a little differently, but we'll watch it as it progresses. Okay, so what have I done? I have my stove set up. It is on that fireproof mat. It has birch bark, that's all there's inside right now is some birch bark like that, and that's gonna use that to light. I went around looking for dry sticks. Bit of a challenge today. The fire band may be off, but that doesn't necessarily mean all the wood is dry. So uh, here's what I found is the driest tiny pieces of wood I have. See how much wood I've got in my hands? That really is all I need, probably more than I need to, well, much more than I need to make a cup of coffee. But uh, to get a good fire going, get my pot of water on and get it boiling, that's more than I need. However, like I said, it's not necessarily the best wood, so I've got some uh, splits here that uh, I can put on top if I need to, or if I want to keep it going. All right, so I mentioned the pot earlier and the pot size. So Bryce sent this over as well. This is a MSR Titanium Titan, or the Titan Titanium from MSR. Great little pot. It actually is. I had, didn't have one before, but I really appreciate it because this stove is designed to work with that pot. Yeah, that's stable enough. That'll work. Uh, designed to work with this pot. So I'll be putting the diameter, of course, inside of this, but those pot supports are of a perfect size to work with this pot. Now, you don't have to use this pot. It's just ideally suited to this pot, also made of titanium like the stove, but you can use some that are slightly larger, 
Not much smaller than this pot though, because much smaller than this, those stands inside are not going to hold the pot in the center. You could use something large. If you have something very large, you could put it on top, like a, a 16 centimeter zebra belly pot will go right on the outside top of this. If you've got something small that you want to use, you could slide a couple of tent pegs, wire, skewers, whatever you want, through the holes on the side and rest it down inside between the pot stands. Not ideal, but it will still work. Like I said, it's designed to go with this pot, so I think it's a great setup. All right, let's get the show on the road. Little piece of birch bark. I'm not going to need all of this because I have some inside. I'm going to just light that. Lit, yeah. I think I'll put one little piece on top of that. And there will be smoke. Yes, there will be smoke. Birch bark can be very smoky. But let's just start dropping in some of these sticks. So you can see I'm not being very precise about it. And the, the whole point of this stove is that you should be able to walk around, pick up, look how fast that's catching on. Walk around, pick up sticks off of the earth or other combustible materials like animal dung. And just fresh out of animal dung here. So I'm going to have to go with what I have. Now, uh, I've got a lot of sticks in here, so I'm going to wait until they really start combusting before I put the pot on. I also want to see if we're going to get, look how much I still have left. That's probably enough right there, but I'll, I'll hold on to these now until that's really gotten going. I mean, pretty much is, isn't it? But uh, we will let it burn for a few seconds. I want to wait till the fire starts to die down so that I can show you inside to show you if any secondary burning is taking place. All right, this is not going to be an easy thing for you to see, but obviously because of the intensity of the flame. But I'm hoping that in between the flames, you're going to be able to see the secondary combustion taking place. So here's what I'm seeing. Now. Maybe it's a little clearer and easier for me to see. There is secondary combustion taking place through the ports around the outside, but not all of them. So at any given time, I'm seeing half of them. I wonder if I can move this around. I can see some taking place up in that right corner. I wonder if I bring it in closer. Hopefully you can see it through the flame. Now the, now the light is starting to change the camera. Maybe if I move it back even. Yeah, about half of the ports are firing at any given time. So it is not a full, complete wood gasification taking place in there, but it is certainly better than it would be if there weren't any of those holes. And that's not the only benefit, of course, of two walls. The two walls does do mean uh, a lot more insulation for the stove. So this will work better in cold weather than it would in uh, if it was just a single wall of titanium because it kind of insulates itself and, and it aids to the combustion. The side, size also and the dimensions are also working to create a bit of a rocket stove. Let me toss a few more pieces in. Bring the, uh, you can see it goes through fuel pretty quickly, but this is still enough to get my pot of water up to temperature for coffee. I'm trying to catch the gasification taking place in there, but not so much happening right now. All right, let's just uh, see if I can get the pot on. I think it's probably got to get some of those sticks out of the way. There we go. That wasn't a good one. Knock him down inside and then we'll put the pot on. There we go. So now you can see how the pot fits in there perfectly and the wall coming up above the top uh, the pot stands gives it some wind protection as well. So all the heat being generated by the fire is landing on the bottom of the pot on the bottom of the pot giving it as much heat transfer as can reasonably be expected. All right, I am just going to heat this water up. I'm going to make some coffee with it. And if I can get a good shot of the gasification, I'll bring you back. All right, we're going to wrap this video up, but there is a few more things I wanted to tell you about the Ganesha wood stove before we do. And the first off is the thing I didn't show you today is how it can be used with an alcohol stove. I've tried it 
Uh, it works, it's just not the ideal way of doing things or the, the ideal setup, I guess. So the concept is if you have a transit, you can take the cap off, set the cap in the bottom of the inner chamber, set your stove on top of that, and that will bring the stove up closer to the bottom of your pot closer but still not a great gap. It's actually a little taller than it should be. It'll work, it's just not the most efficient way of doing things. I'm okay with that because this, I, I have lots of other little stoves and arrangements I can bring if I'm going to bring an alcohol stove along with me when I bring this stove out. So I don't need them to work integrated with this. The other thing is wood pellets. Wood pellets don't work so well in this either. Uh, you can probably see the holes in the bottom there is not a great number of holes and there's not supposed to be for the way this works but wood pellets need quite a bit of airflow through the bottom so there's not enough holes there for wood pellets to work well and the other thing of course is the front feed port is wide open so pellets would just pour out unless you slanted them all to the back and yes you could do that can you use wood pellets yes you can but it's not ideal fuel fuel for this stove in fact uh, this fuel is designed for wood dung, other combustibles. You can make things work in there, but they're not going to work as well as wood goes. The ideal wood is the dry stuff that you pick up off of the forest floor, as long as it's dry, of course. And that's what this stove is designed to use. You don't have to cut and split wood like I did for those extra pieces that I had with me. Just break off branches that you find on the forest floor and it will work just fine. Okay, now my experiences. When this stove first arrived and I set it up and I had my first burn in it. Like any other wood gas stove, I assumed that it would work best with a tila, top lit updraft. So I vertically stacked and put wood completely filled the chamber, built a little fire on top and lit it up and let it burn down through to watch what would take place. What I saw is partial gasification. So not all the jets would fire at any one time. I was a little disappointed by that because I was used to using a solo stove, a bush buddy stove, other wood gas stoves where you got complete gasification, pyrolysis, and all the jets firing in secondary combustion. That didn't occur with this stove and has not occurred ever with this stove. However, I have been able to make it work better. And one of the best ways, if you're really looking to get that complete gasification, is to stack your wood horizontally on the inside and cover off the feed port. Of course, that's only going to last for so long until that wood is consumed by the flames and then you're going to have too much airflow. And that's what the issue is. There's too much airflow in through the stove for a complete wood stove. Now, having said that, the more I use the stove, it occurred to me that I needed to stop considering this as a wood gas stove. Yes, I know it's a gasification stove. That's the way it is marketed. And gasification does play, take place, just not 100%, 100% of the time. And that's what you're looking for in a wood gas stove. That does not mean that the design of the stove is bad because those deficiencies, as I saw them, those things that were preventing it from being a good wood gas stove, actually worked in the favor of other types of burns. The burn like I did here today, where I just lit a fire in the bottom, threw my sticks in on top, and I could have continued to feed through sticks, longer sticks obviously, in through the bottom had I wanted to. If you use it that way and stop thinking of it as a wood gas stove, this stove really excels. You won't, if you're not looking for this to have complete 100% gasification, you will be impressed by its performance. And that's the best thing I can say about it. The double wall chamber worked to help keep the stove hot because of course that's a problem with titanium is how quickly it can transfer heat out and and, and not work as well, especially in cold weather. Um, this works very well. That double wall creates a, a form of insulation that keeps the chamber hot for a longer period of time. And because of its height compared to its diameter, diameter of the inner chamber, it has rocket stove types effects. So it's got partial wood gasification, partial rocket stove, and a whole lot of airflow through the door on or the feed port on the side. And that leads to a very efficient very clean, very hot fire. Just don't think of this as a wood gas stove and you won't be disappointed. In fact, I think you'll find it's actually more versatile as a result of the way it's designed. The gasification, when it does occur, adds to the efficiency of the stove, adds to the heat, adds to the smokelessness of the stove. But because the stove burns so hot, it's virtually smokeless anyway, once it gets going. That's true of all stoves. Not even the best wood gas stoves have to go through that period of heating up and getting the, the wood going before they really become um, smokeless, as we like to say. 
yeah, once I knew that, then I was impressed with the stove. Now, here's the other thing. There's people out there saying, this is a bit of a puzzle stove. There's so many moving pieces that I have to put together to make this work. And it seems fragile. All right, let's address fragile first. It's anything but fragile. It is strong enough. Yes, it looks flimsy and the titanium is thin, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's fragile. This will still hold a considerable amount of weight on top and still be very stable and still function for a lot of burns. Um, it is a little finicky putting together, but once it goes together, it burns really, really well. So what am I gonna say about that? It's not a fold it open, drop the plate kind of a stove. It takes a little bit more work to get it going. But what do you get in exchange? Ultra lightweight, that's what you get. Ultra lightweight stove with a high performance factor that goes with it. Now, I know that people are asking about warping. What about warping with this thin titanium? Yeah, there is. There is some warping taking place. Not on the outside. The outside never seems to get hot enough to do warping, but the inner stove does warp a little bit. So when I've taken it, actually, let's just check on that even now as I'm talking. Lift the top plate out. Lift the inner chamber out. Let's just check for warping taking place. A bit dirty, of course. Actually, not even as dirty as you might think. Okay, so the fire grate in the bottom, let's see if it shows like this. Do you see there is a little bit of warping there? Fixed, okay. How about the walls? Okay, a little bit of warping taking place on the sides. Fixed. That's my, that's how I address warping. Fold it nice and flat, didn't it? And that's what I found is if you have a really long uh, hot fire in this, an extended fire, you will get some warping of the titanium, but once it cools down, just bend it back into shape. Now, I can't say that this is going to last a really, really long time. I've only had 20 fires in it maybe, uh, mostly in my backyard at home because uh, I can have the fires there without having to worry about the fire ban out here in the woods. Out here in the woods, I've had Three. I think the, the, what you saw was the third fire I actually had with it out in the woods. So um, dur durability over the long term, a little hard to say, but uh, I think it, you know, the design is simple enough that, and it's so easy to move the titanium back into place that unless it becomes work hardened, I think this will probably last plenty long. Once again, what are you getting for those concerns? Ultra lightweight, ultra compact stove, very efficient, very hot burning stove. I guess that's the way to sum it up. Okay, uh, that's all that I have. I'm going to give you all the specifications I have for it in the video description. I'm going to give you the links to the Ganesha Wood Stove Project in the video description as well. By the way, this will be coming out in stainless steel at some cost savings with increased weight, of course. And uh, yeah, if you have any comments or questions, please put them in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore. Take that pathless travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.